started. All right. Hmm. All right, let's see if it lets anybody in. It's saying it's a problem with it. Nope, there's one couple. There's Gus, there's Kathy. She didn't have to get her hair done, hair did, hair duded for tonight. <laughs> there we go. Can we see? Oh, it's Kathy, backwards. You need to lean further back, Darby. Keep going. Keep going. It's backwards. No, it's not. It's, it reads right. It reads right to us. It reads backwards to you, but it reads right to us. Oh, I'm going way backwards. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. I got to. Which is only par for the course. Look at this. We're a little late, you know, because Ginger just said I haven't allowed her to do this in a while. So, so we're rushing. Hey, but we're here. Where, and I see everybody made it. Sorry about the screw up on the link. Sometimes. Where are you where the whales have taken a nosedive into the prairie? Well, at my exit here in Vermont, this is a, a famous statue that's up on the top of the hill when you get off exit four, and they're called the Dance of the Whales, Whale Tales. Actually, I think that's the old one. There's a new one now. Those were there, and the people that had commissioned them ended up selling them, and those went to Burlington, and then everybody missed them, and they apparently got some more that like looks like two whales are kind of dancing, but in the ground. I don't know. It's well, a, more information than I needed. Thing. More information than I needed, Jesse. But thank you. Well, yes. now we don't. Yes. Now we don't I have to. You. Now we don't have to Google the dancing whale tales of. Where are you now? I'm in Randolph, Vermont. Vermont. I know. Helping your dad. Vermont. That's Listen to you, you Southern. Vermont. The accents on the Mont. Vermont. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right, listen, we got to give a shout out to Rosie. It's his birthday today. Hey, happy birthday, happy Rosie. Birthday, Love Rosie. you so much. And, you know, I was just thrilled. I got to go down to, let me make sure I get it right, the West Coast Life Church of Churches. This wasn't just a church. This was the Church of Churches in Murrieta. And they did a special, uh, Pastor Ray was great. He did a whole special shout out for Rosie and had a lot of everybody from Kenneth Copeland and uh, Matt and Laura Crouch. They all sent in videos for Rosie and did wonderful things. And we had a great time down there. Oh, wow. um, he did show because all these years of Rosie, I know a lot of his stories and I, because I, I love this man, I get to spend as much time around him as I can. But uh, the pastor put together a really cool little, it's like just under five minutes uh, short on Rosie and his like life story. So you are now going to see our technical wizardry here. <laughs> I have more faith in us, Darby. <laughs> as, as, as I go to share this, and let's, oh, there we go. I cut me off. Oh, no, share screen. You're right. It's been a while. Well, we kept thinking so the other share one screen and I have to turn off my video and my audio, as do you. I think when you play it. Um, all I have are caution signs. Why doesn't it say that I can have it share? Open? You have your, your allow account. opens. I have to allow open preferences. Okay. Privacy. If you go to the next screen, it actually has a choice to select a video. That's something new that they've added. So you can actually pull it off your hard drive and play it. <laughs> I know more information. No, I'm just saying here, and it, it says now, because for some reason it took Zoom off my computer. I, you will not be able to record. I don't want to record the contents of the screen until it is quit. So I have to quit and do that. But I don't want to do that. I just want to. I just want to let it play my video. Did you hit share screen? I did. And what it came up? Some grayed out question marks on all the here tell me if you okay now. okay do this when you bring up share screen go to advanced. Okay. here we go let's see if this works okay ladies and gentlemen let's see if it works here's the wonderful and this is rosie in the hat i'm sitting right behind rosie and that's rosie jr on the left and that is wonderful his wonderful wife cindy's arm around rosie so here's a little Make sure before you play it darby you click optimize video and whatever that other one is there's okay. two buttons there at the Optimize bottom. video clip and share sound. Yes. Yeah, so right? You check both of those. With any luck, I'll see you in like about five minutes. Otherwise, send out a search party. <laughs>
Pastor George Randolph County, and I was born at the house because blacks were not open in the hospital. And in the South at that particular time, blacks didn't, they had no status. Most of them worked as sharecroppers. At the end of the year, the white uh, who owned the farm, they said, well, you, you made your expenses and they got nothing extra. And if you tried to tell them that they were wrong, that's where trouble came. And so you just accepted what they said. <coughs> and that was that. And at five years of age, uh, I started working on the farm, but I wanted to go to school. I wanted to learn something. And my dad, my mom, nobody was very interested in school, but I used to beg my dad to let me go to school. So I, I talked him into it two or three times a week, and I got to go to school that much. My dad came to us one day and said, we're gonna move up north. Where up north meant to me, I thought that, that money was on the tree, man. Just go up north, man, and they said, up north, man, we're going up north. <laughs> Like over a million other African Americans of that era, Greer and his family migrated north, looking to escape Southern oppression and find a better life. The move produced positive results for Rosie, who thrived both in the classroom and on the athletic field. I was all state in football. And um, I got all these, these uh, invitations to come visit their schools. And I went down and visited a school called Virginia State. And first time in my life, I saw a blue-eyed black girl. Oh, man, I want to go to that school. And my mom said to me, um, as a man came, he said, uh, if you come up to Penn State, you want to give me a scholarship. So I went up to Penn State. And they never talked to me about football. They talked to me about the academics of the school. And so I decided to go to Penn State and I forgot about the blue eyed black girl. Greer had an impressive college career, earning All America honors his senior year. But when the New York Giants acquired him in the 1955 draft, Rosie found out the 1950s NFL, although integrated, still had restrictions. That was always a limitation with black athletes who play. Like, you were not going to play quarterback, you were not going to play center. You, you could only play in the place where bulk was necessary and, and speed. I don't care how many great athletes came that was of, of a different color than white, there was only gonna be five at the most on one team. And two of those guys were gonna play in the same position. And I went there anticipating that I was gonna have a hard time, but when I got there, any of the problems that I thought I was gonna have, I didn't have. The Giants didn't have many problems on the field either. Their roster included Hall of Famers Sam Huff, Frank Gifford, and Andy Robustelli. And their coaching staff was equally as impressive. And we had uh, Tom Landry, Ben and Bobby. We had a great team. In seven years, I played in five world championships, which is equal to the Super Bowl today. Although the Giants won just one of those championship games, a 47-7 victory over the Chicago Bears in 1956. Few teams have achieved that sustained success. But shortly after a loss to the Packers in the 1962 title game, Rosie received some bad news. So I was straight to the uh, LA Rams. And it was like someone stabbed me in the heart because I loved that team. I thought about quitting, but I said, why you don't give up the game that you love? You just take your time to another team. But that other team had finished dead last in the league in 1962, winning just one of its 14 games. This team was in such disarray. Black ball players on one side, white ball players on the other side. And they all kept saying, hey, Rosie, come John Ackley. I said, I'm not going to go with all that stuff y'all talking about. My purpose here is to play football and to win. And so that's when the uh, three guys began to stand with me. And, uh, we became the first supporter. That's Deacon Jones, Marilyn Olson, and Lamar London. We were the leaders of the, of the Rams. What we basically did, if there's a guy that's real prejudiced, I'd go make friends with that guy. I'd go and spend time with that guy just to make sure that uh, he understood that this was about team, it was about individual, about what we can do together. And so, little by little, we got rid of the, the, the sentence. 
and we became uh, a cohesive team that worked together and the team began to grow and build and it became a championship team. Come on. <laughs> I turned your camera on your audio. There it is. No, I turned it off on you. Sorry. Well, you were in the corner. I thought. I don't know about you. You have the power to turn me off there. I know. The only thing I can brag about once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can turn off Darby Henson. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really a bragging point, but okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, that's a great one. I, I I could do this whole thing about Rose. He has he has a really nice one too that he does about, you know, Bobby Kennedy and because he and Bobby were such great friends and you know, he was there for the whole campaign and and he's the one that ripped the gun out of Sir Han's hand after Bobby was shot. And what he doesn't talk a lot about, I put it in the book, um, because he does <clears throat> even in what the church put together for him in the interview he did. He doesn't talk about it, but after they grabbed Sir Ham, you know, they were in the kitchen. He had just shot their boy, Bobby. People were picking up knives and skillets and anything they could, and they were ready to beat Sir Ham to death right then and there, a, a mob. And it was Rosie, having safely put the gun in his pocket, that stopped the crowd and said, no, 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 this is America. This is not how we do it in America. And he actually put his body in front of the mob and Sirhan until the police could come and get him out of there. Oh. So, but that's just, uh, you know, even in that tragedy. And like I say, when I was a kid, when he came on the show and he was telling me the story about it, I mean, he just weeped and cried. And I looked at this huge giant of a man and went, wow, it's, it's okay to let out your emotions. It's okay to uh, really be in touch. And that's, well, it's funny you say that because you know how I know Rosie Greer is uh, Marlo Thomas did an album years ago in the 70s called Free to Be You and Me. And the song that Rosie Greer sang was It's All Right to Cry. Really? The song was, it's all right to cry, cry. And it was like a kid's album, but that was his song, which <laughs> I'd forgotten, completely forgotten about that until the last time we had talked with him. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Well, Pastor, I put, they did some wonderful songs I didn't even know. I mean, it, you know, when you look, and he has been in the White House and prayed over everybody uh, from, well, he was, he was there with Reagan. He was there with Bush. He was there. I mean, Democrats, Republicans, Bobby Kennedy, you know, the whole Kennedy family. He was part of the family. And it was just, he was such a great, bridge they described him as and, and it's very true he was a bridge between politics he was a bridge between color he was a bridge between athlete and actor and and just you know <clears throat> and i can't walk anywhere with him or go any place where he doesn't stop and go you know just in the elevator looked at you do know the lord don't you and uh, he has brought so many people to the lord and he is such a great pastor um, I just, I love the man. He's great. How did he seem? Seem good? Did yeah, he's real good. Um, here, I should have a good picture. Uh, Sydney and everything when we were at the church. Because that one's kind of old behind you, right? You and your Yeah, mother. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one is my mutton chops from uh, Texas Rising. That oh, was wow. the, the 50th anniversary of Daniel Boone that we did up at Fess's Winery. Oh, I know why it's there, because it's here. Okay, so if I go there like that, open that up, go down, share screen, and go here. This was Rosie at the church. Oh, he looks great. Oh, he does. He looks wonderful. And that's his lovely wife, Cindy. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great time. So that's it. So Man, and, and it's been a while since you and I have talked. Yeah, I'm kind of glad we haven't done the Zoom because I'm sure you would have shown pictures from Mid-South Festival 
of me dancing, having to pull my pants up. Oh my gosh, that was a classic and never spilling a drop of your beer. We got to see you waggle your butt a little bit for us. Nice going. Well, the you good were part- out there dancing. Was anybody else dancing? You stole the show, I think, Darby. <laughs> well, the only good part about, and I did have a copy of that for obvious reasons, but the good part of that was that, you know, my COVID pants were falling down. So that means I must be losing weight, so. <laughs> Well, you should wear a belt. I thought all men wore belts. Isn't that I did have a belt on. Well, how come your pants are falling down then? You need a new I belt? Might, I might be getting to that, that stage of life where <laughs> suspenders might come in handy now. Oh, please don't do that, Darby. That's so not cool. That's just, you just won't be cool anymore. And Don used to wear the suspenders all the time. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And he oh. died at a ripe old age. So. No, what was what was really uncool is I had suspenders on once and a belt. My daughter would not go out and be seen with me. She's like, no, dad, it's one or the other. You can't do both. I'm like, why not? That is, is, I mean, I'm used to pants with a belt and the suspenders are holding. Dad, one that or the other. That's not what you're allowed to do when you're a, you know, a pop icon. You have to, you have a certain image to protect. So um, did I hear you say that uh, contested planes, there's there more details about contested planes and when that- No, I haven't gotten more. I, I heard hopefully in September and they talked about a couple of uh, places they want to premiere. You know, they shot it in Texas, they shot it in Oklahoma. But the thing that kind of caught my ear was the, uh, the Cowboy Hall of Fame, which oh. is such a great museum and wonderful venue that they were going to have a screening at the uh, Hall of Fame. Wow. in September and I believe if Wyatt goes to that one if Buck Buck's a busy guy I just talked to him he flew up and he's filming uh Yellowstone um but you know if those guys show up I gotta be there for it <laughs> and I can't wait to see it I've only seen the trailer well you're not supposed to have seen it yet that's why it's the premiere you actors you think you have a right to see <laughs> you're not, <coughs> you know you'll have an opinion. You're not allowed to have a final <coughs> You know I have a behind the scenes. I get to see it first. Come on. Yeah. Rice to see the dailies. <laughs> you definitely don't want you to see the dailies because then you see everything that wasn't actually shot. <laughs> Here, you know what? It, <laughs> I told you my dailies one for uh seven from heaven yeah. when when they were oh maybe i was talking to your husband about it the, the director because he would appreciate it uh seven from heaven <clears throat> which was basically <clears throat> excuse me i'm glad i'm coughing here and not spreading anything totally. um <laughs> was it was basically seven from um it was charlie's angels plus four so it was seven from heaven they go out and solve crimes anyway one of the girls lead girl you know blonde hair long hair and we're shooting three or four days into it, you know, we come to a Friday um, or May, you know, and all of a sudden we come back to work Monday and the lead girl had gone from long blonde hair to short blonde hair. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Oh, well, I saw the dailies and I thought I'd look much better with the short hair. Like, yeah, no. And of you course, you know, written out and killed off and there you go. <laughs> No, we couldn't kill her off. She's one of the main, you know, angels. And we'd already shot some of the end of it in the beginning, you know, because you shoot out of order. No, we had to go get a, um, a, a wig. And, try, and if you look really carefully, you can see where the wig is and where. I think they, didn't they change the name of that to Angels Brigade? Yes. That, that was, they called that's it. The one that. you got your van from? Is that the one that's got the van that Striper used? that Striper ended up getting the van and having on their album cover. And cause I gave it to my sister cause she was the manager for Striper. They took all the pictures and actually now out of Japan, I believe, I don't think it's Korea. I think it's Japan. They're now selling the replica of that van in the Striper, you know, with the stripes on it and everything. You gotta get you one Darby, just for uh, your shelf back there. You're right. I can I can put it up on my trophy wall want for, over here. You want that for Christmas? That can be your Christmas present. 
All right, so we got all that. And for anybody who's new to our group, that we did do an interview with Graydon Clark, who was the director of that movie. So if you ever want to go back and look at it, which brings me to another thing. Do you realize we've been doing this for two years? We started doing this in July of 2020. Are you serious? Crazy two years. It has flown by. <laughs> Boy, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, so we have to give a shout out to a lot of our people that are tuned in tonight. A lot of, ones that have been with us since the beginning, of course, like Brenda Mudrack and Carla Craybaum and Christine and Kathy Ellis Stone and Carolyn, Carolyn Pillsbury. Hi, Darby. Lady with the attitude here, she says. Um, and she oh, does. She does have an attitude there, I got to say. Well, she's proud to be a darling. She can't help herself. Um, oh, Kathy Ellis Stone is the one who filmed Darby in his baggy COVID pants during the twist. I was afraid he'd get mad at me for posting it, but I thought he and Bonnie looked great. <laughs> He's the one that got the Facebook um, poster for answering the, the Darby 21 questions. Oh, speaking of, so Mid-South. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <a> moment. <laughs> <coughs> Boy, there we go. I really coughing. You're not allowed to do that these days. What are you drinking these days? Maybe that's uh, you need to change your drink. It's actually no non-alcoholic Celsius. Just a little pick me up because I've been working. Oh, I took pictures just for Ginger. Wait, Hold on. We just talking about Mid South. So okay, had a nice dance scene. You had your Darby's Darling gathering. Here you are rivaling Robert Fuller and having your gatherings. So very well, proud. no, 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 no. Let's not say rival. I'm trying to be <laughs> a Robert. I, I am a Robert Fuller groupie. Okay. I am part of the fan. I have my badge. I'm part of You're the fan. You're a subset to the great Robert Fuller. I like it. <laughs> so you had your gathering and you what'd you do? You did a, a brand new 21 questions or was this? Wasn't well, we did a talk for a while. And I got to tell you, you know, they gave me that trash can that I absolutely love with Haggerty on it and the bear. Um, but also, and, I, and we just sat down and talked for a while. And then I also did the 21 questions. But let's see if I can share this one. It was you really fun. Questions. Huh? Was it the same ones from Canab or was it a new set? We, I changed it up a little bit. You know, you come on, you got to use a little different. <clears throat> okay, is that sharing a picture? Oh, yes. It looks like you're holding your hat. Is that? <laughs> I am holding my hat. And it was fun because I kind of walked in with the hat knowing, you know, that's what people wanted to see. But when I used to do it like that, on my back, is yeah. if I had it here, I would have show you. I did that once when I walked in a hospital. They had me doing an appearance at a children's hospital and stuff. And I walked in and this poor little girl had been through a fire and just had a number of grafts and everything. And she wasn't going to smile. What am I? Hi, you know, smile because I'm here. And there was nothing, but then I took off my hat and I started doing that and making it look like it was shine. And she started to smile and it was like, oh. So that was something I used to get to do with the hat. I tried sharing that tape. I know the audio is bad in the beginning because you know me with the big voice, I didn't think I needed a mic, but of course it didn't record. So first couple of minutes are silent, a little, a little quiet, but then I kicks in you needed the quality cameramanship of stacy schaefer who fast forward to the valley relic johnny crawford events that you were at yes and here i gotta give a shout out to hang on why is it what, go away why is it doing stuff i give a shout out, look at this shirt ready <laughs> oh my gosh who made that for you that's hysterical actually they didn't make it <clears throat> for me this was at the Johnny Crawford opening at the museum. And I saw Stephen wearing this shirt. And I'm like, wait a minute, come on. I, I've got to get a paw shirt. And it's actually the rifleman. Because of course, Johnny kept saying paw, paw. And, <laughs> you know, that was his paw. And Steve was so great. He sent me one from the Johnny Crawford legacy page. He sent me my own paw t-shirt. That's perfect. I love it. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love it. I should have thought of it, but they did. Well, you did a great job as the host. I was very impressed. You went around, said hi to everybody. You were the hoster, host with the most. I was very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was 
that was really a fun little event. It was nice to see Steve um, uh, Connors there, you know, for his dad. He gave a nice little and uh, Bobby Crawford uh, was there. Bobby, of course, of course, and uh, Johnny's uh, sisters, and it, it, it was just. It's a lot of fun, and that museum is great. It's so there's so much nostalgia there. They have great old signs from restaurants that have come and gone, and you're just like, oh, I remember that. Now, fun. was that a permanent display or is that a temporary display? Temporary display, and I don't want to quote a date because I'll probably get it wrong. But she said it in the video that this will be up until. Okay. I want to well, say December, but I'm. I, so, um, yeah, I want to say December, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see if anybody told us. Uh, hold on. Um, Stacy says hi. Kathy Ellis Stone says I love my poster. When I get my office rearranged, I'll post all my Darbyness. <laughs> uh, Tammy gives us a look at all the tech working. Thanks, Ginger Wink. Ah, uh, you're welcome. Ah, oh, there you, you go. We are behind the scenes struggle. <laughs> uh todd newport darby i see you're going to the tucson tv west fest do you know much about it should be a good event and a great location well funny you should bring that up todd <laughs> i did not plant him i did not plant him i want you to know. <laughs> i did not but yes i, I noticed dark. i noticed somebody on the <laughs> i i noticed somebody on the darlings page did you know tell the whole audition story and everything and yes come meet darby at the arizona I hear it's going to be a great event. Why don't you tell us more about it, Ginger? As a, one of the co-producers, I could tell you about it. Um, actually, it's a- That's her disclaimer. Yes, yes. So don't quote me. I, I'm going to, of course, give it a positive. But anyway, so it's coming together really nicely. It's next March um, of 2023. So it's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Thursday, we had just got the okay to do a special tour with up to the Ponderosa 2 which is a replica of the Bonanza Ponderosa house that Lauren Green and his second wife had built there. So, and it's under new ownership because they used to do an event every year. And so this is like a huge deal because these folks don't necessarily open it up. They don't open it up to anybody. This is a special deal to go up there. You get to tour the house. You get to take a picture on the staircase in front of the fireplace behind Ben's desk because the living room looks exactly, the living room and dining room looks exactly like the house. Then you walk through and then they actually have like the regular house and then they're going to do a barbecue and Dusty and the cow, the, the cowboy and Dusty, I think Dusty's the horse. So Dusty and the cowboy, I think it's called. Are going Wait a minute, they're barbecuing the horse? And no, the horse does tricks apparently. So he's going to do his tricks and stuff. So anyway, so the way it works is it's like $50 a day just for the registration to attend the event. Um, Stacy, or Stacy, Penny McQueen is my co-producer on it. And once things settle a little bit, we'll probably do our own Q&A. So um, just keep post, keep your ears posted for that. And then we'll answer all your questions, go over everything. But yes, Darby is one of nine guests we have locked in. Um, eight of them, including Darby, have been announced. And one we have to hold off until August. So I can't tell you who that is. But <laughs> right now it's Darby and Rudy Ramos and Allison, <clears throat> Allison Arngrim and Charlotte Stewart from Little House and Bo Svensson. Now, stop right there, because I just went crazy. Right before I came on, I wanted to call up Bo and get him to come on and do this with us. And we'll yeah, do a watch party and we'll watch the Daniel Boone episode that he did. Oh, he's he did a Daniel Boone He did a Daniel. Ginger didn't watch any of our posts while she was away. If she wasn't in it, she didn't watch it. <laughs> didn't you didn't see. Me, why would I? <laughs> you, you... <laughs> I'm kidding. I've been busy, darling. You should go back and watch the Q&A. Maybe I'll repost it. You should go back and watch the Q&A that I did with Bo. Uh, Robert Fuller was on it, Wyatt McRae, myself. I th but anyway, they asked Bo about the Daniel Boone, and he couldn't remember, but he did say he thought he had a kissing scene with me and how sweet and luscious my lips were. What? <laughs> you remember it that way, Darby? My inquiry minds want to know. See what you miss when you don't watch, Ginger, I even know. though you're not on it. You should have you know, every now and then we do, we do interesting things. 
Okay, I have to watch that. So meanwhile, you sit there, there with your off? whale tails and uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of, so we're cleaning out my father's record collection and look what I come across. Ah, there you go. Except there's no record in it. It's just the oh, I can't get it to I don't have my green screen with me. Anyways, it's Ed Ames and his family, but it's just the cover. <laughs> I don't know where the record ended up. So if anyone wants the cover, I'm happy to give anybody the cover if you're an Ed Ames fan and you want a copy of the album that's the Ames Brothers where he's on it. I just, I'm like fading should, into my whale tails. I should probably post it up on my ceiling. And of course, oh, we just wish, we just wished Ed Ames a happy birthday. We did. Happy birthday, Ed. Yes. And that, he, I thought that was ironic that popped up. I don't even know what year it's from. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> What else have you been, boy, you've been busy working around your house. Yes. Right? Which I know because you always say, Darby, you always sound so tired. Why, why, why? No, I said you always sound so busy. Oh. I never say you sound tired. I just Maybe I sound tired. I love this. Hang on. I got to show this picture. I love it. Hang on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at the wig. That wig looks really bad, isn't it? <laughs> Rosie is a big guy. I got to tell you that. I, you know, Ted White, who I was hoping to get on. Oh, wait, a post Steven Zone, no, before we get off on that subject. But you digress, I know. And, and yes, and he talked about the sweet lips and everything. I thought I'm going to call him up and see if I can't bug him to come on, watch the episode. I don't even know if I was in that episode with him because I don't know what episode it is. But I thought we're going to, we, we should try to do a watch party with Bo and, uh, Find out what really happened during the filming of that. Well, when's your birthday? Your birthday's in August. August what? August? 19th. Okay. Maybe we can do it like the first Thursday. I'm back like the first of August, so. And I'll be in Hawaii. Unfortunately, I'm not doing Kanab this year, which, you know, I love Kanab. But it's one of those birthdays you get out of town for and stuff. And I got great family in Hawaii. So I'll go suffer over in the islands. How long are you going to, uh, going to Hawaii for? Eh, about 10 days. Little, when do you think you're going? You're going to be there for your birthday? Yeah. Okay. So you'll be you'll be around the first week of August though, right? Oh yeah, no. First week of August I'll be around. Maybe you can bug Bo and see if he's interested in doing a watch party. Well, that's why I, I oh so I tried calling him because he sent me a script. I mean, we have communicated back and forward, I know. Uh, because I think he's great. I just met him there. But um and all of a sudden, right before I came on, his number's not in my address book. I couldn't find a text message or email from him. So either somebody else he's said- him. He's ghosting you, Darby. No yeah. kidding, but how'd he get on my computer to erase himself? <laughs> That's pretty talented. I don't know. I think it's your tech issues. I don't think it's his. So anyway, so I'm, I'm going to do my best to get a, get a hold. Well, if you got him down for the- uh, and I, I didn't mean to interrupt your list of who all is going to be there. But if you have a contact for him, I want to check with you so I can talk to him, see if we can talk him into this. Who else is going to be there, Ginger? Um, I'm trying to remember who else I said. Uh, I said Rudy, Ram you, Roberta Shore, that was in the Virginian, uh, Rudy Ramos, Allison Arngrim, Charlotte Stewart, uh, Bo Svensson. This is terrible. I'm, not, I'm forgetting. And, and many, many and, more. <laughs> and someone to be named later. A surprise guest. Someone to be named later. I'm missing two. Who am I missing? Uh, I'll think of it. I'll probably blurt it out in the middle of our conversation. I'm that good. <laughs> so tune in to our Q&A, Penny and I's Q&A, when we get closer. And we can give answer all your questions, give you more additional detail. Because we have a special trip to the Ponderosa Ranch in Mesa. We have a special trip to uh, Old Tucson Studios, we think, to visit the High Chaparral Ranch. Uh, we have a special trip plan to go down to Mesquite. McGreevy. Oh, Michael McGreevy and Mitch Vogel. That's and Mitch Vogel. Banana. Bananas. Bananas. Thank, thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. She's awesome, isn't she? What would I do? She is. <laughs> so, and one still left to be announced, but we'll announce that at the beginning of next month. So, stay tuned. So, if you haven't just subscribed to our newsletter, you can go to our page at tvwestfest.com yeah 
and just click on the link and then we're going to be sending out a newsletter once a month that has all the details and highlights and stories about all your favorite celebs. So if you got anything you want us to post, Darby, let us know. Um, all right, where's my behind the scenes? Oh, here's my behind the scenes picture. So I just went to one of these other really fun. Oh, hang on. I'm, I've covered up my share screen. It's too big. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Here's a behind the scenes of Pat Wayne and Bobby taking a picture of, of Rob Word. And he was in uh, Robert Pine's hats. But I just thought, I thought that was a great behind the scenes shot. <laughs> you, you've probably seen Bobby post this somewhere. I love it how all you actors are like directors too. You always are checking each other's work. If you notice how Patrick Quinn's looking over Bobby's shoulder to make sure he does it right. <laughs> and here we go. Here's, here's, this is Rob that put, oh, is it got the wrong picture? What I picture know, is cut it? Off. You must have something over the top of it or it's loading. Ah, okay. So hold on. I click on the picture. Oh, there's you. There? There we go. Now? Is that Robert Pine in the middle? That's Robert Pine in the middle. Look at the hat. Who, who definitely out cowboyed me that day. How right. he did that, I don't know. Because you're ready to go to Hawaii. So you're wearing yeah. a Hawaii hat. <laughs> well, it was in the valley at almost 100 degrees, too. So I. Uh, yeah, but what's with your expression? You look like somebody's goose in you or something. <laughs> well, it's because he out cowboyed me. I, usually I'm the cowboy in the group. But Rob is doing his word on Western and, and Robert is one of the, uh, one of the interviewers, oh, interviewees. Nice. interviewees. And then it was also his birthday. Let me see if, whoop, with, well, they had about three Roberts there whose birthday it was that day, but that was a fun day too. <laughs> And then we also have to have a moment of silence. We've lost a couple greats lately. We lost LQ Jones and we lost Larry Storch. Of course, Larry Storch was 90. I know. And I took uh, Brenda's one down because it wasn't a positive thing about LQ. Uh, you know, he was Fess's roommate in, in college and stuff. Fess helped him. He did a few boons, I think, believe. Um, but yeah. There's just too many of them going. That's if we talk about the the lunches that we have, you know. So we just gotta enjoy everybody that's here. You've been doing those a lot. You guys, you go to that place in Cal is it Calabasas? No, it's in um, Sherman Oaks, basically, it's right outside Studio City. You fancy fancy people. Yeah, you know, as, as regular folk can't get in there, I guess. <laughs> oh, sure they can. Well, it, it got more popular once you know, once upon a time in Hollywood. They shot there, so now Is it's it like, really oh, too funny. There, I mean, it's an old Hollywood hangout, but it's nice because you always see us outdoors. They've done you know things in the parking lot and stuff, and pretty decent margarita too. So you would know, <laughs> but but it uh, well, you have to. I mean, you know, when it when in Rome, right? That's their signature drink. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's Casa Vega. It's you know, yes, margaritas are. Yes. <laughs> Their specialties. Carlos oh Patrick my, all right. Patrick Wayne, I guess he's a new one. It's, when's his birthday? He's what? Um, Carlos said, happy birthday to Patrick Wayne. When was his birthday? That was the other birthday boy, yes. <laughs> so it was Patrick, Bobby, and Bobby? No, Patrick. Two Roberts. Fine, and. Two, hold on, let me, I got to share a screen again now, just because you said that. These are the two Roberts. They were birth, both birthday boys. Dun, da, da, da. Who's that? See, now. Well, Robert gonna, Pine. Huh? What's he eating? What's he eating? Flan. They oh. brought him a little birthday flan cake. Now, he shaved off his beard, but let's see who recognizes him. Who comes up with who he is? Dun, da, da, da. I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Come on, gang. Who was that? Somebody must recognize him. Tick tock, tick tock. Okay, uh, we'll tick tock it until somebody comes up with it. Or we lost everybody. 
<clears throat> we probably put them all to sleep hours ago. <laughs> You know, if those were mermaids, that would our talks. <laughs> if those were mermaids, that would almost be phallic. Okay, I'm just saying. Well, they're not. So it's not. <laughs> they're not. They're the dancing <laughs> whales. Out of the gutter. And Everybody knows the dancing go. whales. We think positive. We say positive things. Mermaids are <laughs> well, very positive. <laughs> mermaids are positive. They're. they're Yes, but you had to tack on would be phallic, so that's which doesn't make any sense because they're females. So, well, only because they're waving their tail at you. I mean, <laughs> you can't do that in 2023. No waving the tail. Oh, Darby, you're so silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, somebody says put okay, let's see. He looks familiar, but I can't think of his name, says Brenda. Uh, Augustus says put the show picture. the picture oh, again. Okay, okay. Do it again. Up, oh, somebody. My doxy. All right. I didn't get a chance to see it. She's going to ask her doxy who he is. <laughs> All right, we're looking for this guy. Right here, and I'm even giving you a clue by Robert and Robert birthday. All right, Robert. Robert. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. I better stop or I'll have to pay Merv Griffin money for that song. <laughs> Somebody's going to be knocking at our door. Yours, my money. If okay. he knocks at my door, I'll be pretty worried because he had a nice funeral. Nothing? Nobody? Anybody? No, okay. You know that Merv got paid every time that song played. That was one of really? his songs. That's yes. his fortune, huh? And you know the other Merv Griffin song that made him a little fortune? Mm -hmm. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Really? That was his? That's a Merv Griffin song. Learn I love Merv. He is such that a that great it. guy. I'm going to have you sing that at TV West Fest. So practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, see. Right after you dance the twist again, now we're going to have to have an encore performance. So make sure you wear your suspenders. Maybe you'll have pants by then. There you go. Maybe you'll have and a pair of pants that fit. <laughs> so, and when they do contested planes, you are, think they're going to go straight to streaming? Or you think they're going to, what do you think they're going to do with it? There you go. Can I be part of the fantastic, uh, the, the fearsome force? There we go. Good <laughs> shot, huh? Um, <laughs> listen, distribution these days is... <laughs> Come back to us, Ginger. It's okay. No, you're just, uh, okay. You didn't think I fit right in there? Look, Merle Olson. I'm, I'm taking out. Merle and Olson. There you go. And <laughs> once again, not to harp on it, but wake up, Hall of Fame. Why is he the only one of the fearsome foursome that's not in the Hall of Fame? I don't know. With all he's done, not only on the football field, <laughs> But for people everywhere, Rosie Greer should be honored because he was a fabulous football player, too. Well, and he's just a quality human being. And they have now they have after a certain amount of years after they played, they can be nominated to be the like the senior. They have one. Yes. Folks that have been overlooked. He should at least be nominated for that. He's so where are the Rams. He still bleeds Rams. He has the Ram every you know, Sundays. I talk to him about the game and he's still a huge fan. And I just think it's crying shame. I, I don't know what's wrong with people. We all agree. Okay, did anybody? Okay, with who that's that? right. That wasn't positive. How dare you, Ginger, get on that subject? Somebody asked, no, Rob Word. That wasn't Rob Word. No. Nice, nice. No, but nice <laughs> I, try, I, though. I don't know. So you'll have to tell us. Who was that? Bring it out the picture again. Huh? Well, I. You know, I be, you tell us, we're going to be like, oh, you know me in names. My name, I was waiting for somebody you to tell me. I just knew Robert. Huh? Uh, you don't know who it is either. I know it's Ro yeah. it's Robert. Oh my God! Why? You know me in names. Well, why did you do this if you didn't know who it was? Because I expected one of the darlings of Deuce to tell right, me. Put your picture back up for a second, maybe. You know they're see. always so on top of it. I thought for sure they would come and tell me. I don't know. Where's James Culpepper? He usually knows all this stuff, and Stacy usually knows all. This I stuff. I will contact Rob immediately. Put the picture back up for one more second. We're just going to look one more time. Okay. Robert. Let's see. There's Robert Davi. Robert. Mm, Robert. Put a beard on him. You have to put a beard on him. Draw a little beard on him. 
How do we not know who that is? I like his ring though. And his birthday is the same day as Robert Pines. Are you calling Robert right now? <laughs> you bet I am. Oh my God, you're too funny. Hey, Rob, what was the other Robert whose birthday it was? Robert Woods. Oh, and Robert Pine. Robert Pine and Robert Woods. And Robert Forrester's birthday was actually the 13th. <laughs> and Robert Forrester. Okay, yes. Oh, and we all sang. Oh, you got to send me that video clip of us singing happy birthday to. I, 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 we can't post it because it's for uh, Tony Gill and the Robert Fuller. Okay, hold on. I got to take you off audio because I got all the darlings listening and you He's know, dropping, I don't want anybody yes. to get in trouble here. <laughs> all right, somebody look up Robert Woods for me. Everybody's looking up Robert Woods. Because I, I posted, I posted is. the picture. Can you take a screenshot of just all of us that were there at lunch? Because we didn't get a good shot. I feel positive he could. Thanks. Just as we anybody Bueller. Well, Robert <laughs> all right, Pine buddy. We won't. We won't do the movie, but the just a screenshot Robert of the group would be great. Just let me know who Robert Woods was. What was he in? Robert Pine was in Chips. That's what we all know him from. He was hold on, hold on, wait. I'm putting you back on speaker here. Hold on. Oh, and geez. and Rob would like to tell us that. Go ahead. That, that Robert Woods, who was there at the lunch, his birthday is this coming Tuesday when we tape a word on Westerns, and he has done episodes, as has Darby, of a word on Westerns. He starred in 42 westerns italian spaghetti westerns and most of them haven't come here so nobody knows who he is i didn't know who he was until we started doing these award on westerns but if you go to youtube and and my site a word on westerns type in robert woods and he's charming he's a just a wonderful guy he was born in colorado and ended up going to europe and they asked him if he could horseback ride and he suddenly was starring in spaghetti westerns it's an amazing story Thank you, Rob. We'll all tune in to Word on Westerns. Okay. You got it. Thanks uh, for doing this, and I'll send you a, a flame breath. I'll see you Tuesday. Okay, great. Thanks, pal. Bye. Bye Rob. Yeah, Tuesday at the Autry, we're doing another one that Robert Pine will be a guest. There's a lot of good guests, too, so that'll be fun. Very nice. All right. Have we bored people enough? I know. Are, are, we, <laughs> are, we, are we caught up? Oh, you were talking about working. We got Hear this about me working. So this was this was. Oh, hold on. This was me earlier <laughs> today. Apparently, he doesn't think I believe he works around the house. Projects around the house. This was it. <laughs> uh, I moved about twelve hundred pounds of sand and soil and dirt. See, you're laughing. Do they look at you like you're nuts when you're out there taking pictures of yourself in the back? <laughs> No, it's Hollywood. Everybody, uh, everybody, everybody does that. takes pictures of themselves. There, all right. Here, I'll give you just pictures of the railway ties. How, oh, where'd they go? Hold on. You Stop that. Blocking. You need to close these other pictures. Is the problem? Screenshot. Oh, is that what they're over the other yeah, ones? No okay, problem. so hold on. That one go away. That one go away. So there these are these are the railway ties that I am doing the project for. And, you know, of course, the projects, because we don't have any water. And I just feel too guilty uh, watering a lawn. So we took out the lawn. Here, let me put this picture up. This is one of the ones that Can made me say, okay. Ties? Huh? Can you put in railroad ties instead of your lawn? Yeah, I'm going to do a whole thing with that. Because this picture here... Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah. Where is that? This is Lake Mead. Oh my God, I had heard something about that, but wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, when you're driving and the water's supposed to be up here and- Wow. And you know, people are still, I still see people hosing down the driveway and the lush lawn and they just don't get it that when this is gone, because you know, we're in a 20 year drought and unfortunately, we don't know if we're at the you know end of a 20 year drought or if we are halfway through a 40 year drought or if as long as we know it, you know, this is going to change. So we we have L.A. is a semi arid desert. That is our climate. 
And I have a great book on the Beverly Hills Hotel because I went to school with the kid whose mom actually started the Beverly Hills Hotel, which oh, is wow. the whole song, you know, Hotel California is kind of about that and everything. And it, oh, it was, a, I didn't know that. and it's exactly halfway between downtown LA and the beach. So it was when you rode horses and stuff, that was your halfway watering hole. And that's how it's starting. But there are pictures from then and you look and there is no vegetation. There's no green. It's all, you know, stage brush and kind of what is in the picture behind you. And now, of course, it's all lush, green, Beverly Hills, palm trees, lawns. It looks like the English countryside. So we haven't been using our water too wisely. Um, palm Springs, growing up when I was a kid, people would go to Palm Springs for the dry air because it was good for their asthma and their respiratory. And Now you go there and it's actually humid because there's so many golf courses. Oh, wow. Um, so anyway of palm springs and your sister darren how she's living in tahiti now she's actually in tahiti right now visiting with her husband they're actually living in mexico mexico oh really yes and on, to on the it. edge of a big beautiful lake down there that i can't wait to go visit her but yeah poor girl she's in tahiti now you know yeah poor girl <laughs> <laughs> Was she said something about saying goodbye to her childhood home. Was she talking about your house in, in, uh, no, that was a really good friend. They used to be uh, right next door to us when we were living on top of Bel Air road. Um, their house was right next door when my two sisters were born and then they moved down to the base of Bel Air, right inside the Bel Air gate, big, gorgeous house there. That, and we just spent so much time there growing up and living. And uh, it backed up to Jerry Lewis's house. And it, it, yeah, it was just part of part of us growing up. And they just put it on the market and they're selling it. Um, so she had one last fling there party with, with her two friends. She's a busy girl, just like you yeah, are. Because they had two sisters, Lynette and Shireen, which were exactly my sister Darcy and Darren's age. Oh, OK. And then just another little trivia, Ben Stiller came in and bought their, well, there were like three people in between that bought the house across the street up on top of Bel Air. But Ben Stiller was one who I admire as an artist. I think he's great. Even though people posted that picture of me and Ben Stiller from, I think it was Dodgeball or something, and said how much we looked alike. You're in Dodgeball? No, I wasn't in Dodgeball. But they posted his picture from Dodgeball. Oh, next to you. <laughs> next to me. And because so, someone came up and said, you know, you look so much like Ben Stiller. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, no, no, no. H haven't you seen the one? And I'm like, no. But all right. You're Should I show it? Ben Stiller's money. Yeah, I want to see it. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> this is the last one. And then we're we we really should let people go. Okay, hold on. Let me turn that on. <laughs> We go to share screen. I got to make it smaller. <laughs> Come on, why aren't we going smaller? There we go. Okay. Now you tell me if you think you see. Now, for all fairness, this was back in my days of our lives days. Okay. But what do you think? <laughs> Hello? Well, <laughs> I think I vote yay on that. <laughs> Nobody else. That's funny. I love it. Maybe you know, he, not, maybe he stole his look from you, Darby. I think my mustache is a little bit better than his, but come on. This now. does go down a little bit lower, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> so is that you imitating Ben Stiller or Ben Stiller imitating you? I think he's that, that wasn't he's me trying to imitate anymore. anybody. That was me for the my my Salem days when I was probably. Oh, even... come on. We'll just say your days with uh, Lisa Trussell and when you were the what probation officer? Is that what? <laughs> That's when I was still the good probation officer before I became the, the rapist. And again, if you want to see clips from that in his days of our lives, we did a. No, I got to get the link because Lisa Trussell and her husband and had a nice time with Alan too. So we've got quite a few shows. So I know, and I got to get. I got to get some more links from them because I put some up on the website and then some of them were taken down and done. So I got to go clean the website up and do that. It's time, Darby. It's time. 
got to okay. update your appearances again. Your well, speaking of, speaking of time, my dear, I, I think we've done right. enough damage here. Well, Have, we thank everybody. Let's see, anybody else got anything? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Brenda Mudrack also gives a thumbs up. Is is anybody else still out okay, there? Nobody else dared comment. <laughs> They're laughing too hard. They, uh... <laughs> and what do you think? Do you think I should be part of the fearsome foursome? You're gonna, is that you're going to be your next side-by-side -side picture? <laughs> I'll do a screen capture that. Here, get ready to take your hat off and pretend you're Marlon Olson, and we'll do a screen capture. <laughs> Ginger, it was great catching up with you. Yes. If you have Bo's information, get it to me. I don't know why I don't have it. I'll look other places. Um, I think I just have that, an email. I don't think I have his phone number. But that's it. Once again, thanks to Stephen for my paw shirt. <laughs> and uh and because he really is rob was so right he is absolutely charming uh so you can you know go and listen more about uh robert's story there and robert pine i just he's such a great guy he's so good um and of course his son is doing so great too it's fun to talk about him yeah very um much. but anyway that's it and uh Good, good catching up with you. Well, nice catching up with you. And thank you everybody for stopping by with us. And um, again, stay tuned for everything that's coming down the pike. And uh, I guess that's it. So on that note. Uh, on that note. <laughs> Have a good one, Darby. Good night, Bye. everybody. <laughs>